The Dam Online Method, Chapter 2. With the fundamentals as, as our foundation, we can now shift our focus to tools and methods. The technique outlined in this chapter called the Damned Online Method is so easy to do, yet so powerful, it's truly phenomenal. Allow me to illustrate with the following vignette. Vignette or whatever, I don't know. It's Valentine's Day early morning. Sam Mann awakes abruptly to his cell phone ringing at his bedside. Normally, he'd ignore such an early call, but his cell rings incessantly. Knowing that people rarely blow up his phone with good news, especially before dawn, Sam braces himself for an emergency and answers the call. What happened next? How? What happens next, however, is something he could have never imagined. Hello, this is Sam. Hi, Sam. This is Sarah. Sam is a seasoned business consultant, and Sarah's com uh, and Sarah's company is his biggest client. Oh, hi, Sarah. What can I do for you? With a gasp, Sarah exclaims, "You haven't seen what's on the internet about you." Sam has no idea what she's talking about. Sarah expl uh, explains that her company received an anonymous email. An anonymous email via their website's contact us page accusing Samuel Mann of being a woman beating alcoholic, drug addicted alcoholic. What? Drug addicted alcoholic and rapist? You said, you stupid bitch, you put alcoholic twice. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Drug addicted alcoholic. What the fuck are you talking about, you stupid bitch? and rapist among the other similar things the email also instructed the company to google samuel mann mba to see it's true blindsided and still on the call with sarah sam reaches for his laptop and google samuel mann mba business consultant he is shocked by what he sees his linkedin profile promoting his business credentials and accomplishments no longer appears at the top of google search results instead there is a post on a website called cheater report with the headline, Samuel Mann, MBA, is a woman-beating alcoholic business consultant. Immediately below this, let me let me, uh, let me let me let everybody in on something. Now that I just read this, I'm going to go even harder. I'm going to go even fucking harder. Even harder now. Now, I'm, now I went from being angry and then to being sad, and now I'm determined. With a, is a woman being immediately, be, immediately below that search result is another listing on a website called Report My Ex with the headline, Business Consultant Samuel Mann, MBA, is a psycho rapist pedophile. Followed by a similar post on Ripoff Report, and it goes on and on. In total, the allegations span the first four pages of Google, Reser Google results for Sam's name. Any positive information about him, including endorsements from clients, was now buried further back in Google than anyone would typically look. Alarmed, Sam defends himself. Sarah, this is literally unbelievable. I have no idea. No, you don't say that, bro. Fuck that. If you say, fine, you know what? You want to let us go because of all this bullshit? We're suing you. We'll see you in court. Goodbye. Hang up on that stupid bitch. You want to you want to believe some shit you see in the fucking online? You see, on well, because everything online is true, right? You want to believe what you see online? Fine. Hang up the phone. Tell her we're fucking suing her. We'll see you in court. No, no, we don't play that game around here. And I'm going to go even harder now. I'm even, I'm fucking pissed, bro. Sarah, this is literally unbelievable. I have no idea why this is happening. You've been working with me for 10 years. You know none of this is true. Yeah, she, you, you goddamn right Sarah knows it's not true, but she's still going to follow it. And you want to know what, Sarah? I'll see you where I'll see your ass in court, and I'm going to fucking bust your ass out, Sarah. You're going to be fired after I'm done with you. I'm sorry, Sam. It doesn't matter if it's not true. It's all over the Internet. It looks bad for our company to be associated with you. Fine. We'll see you in court. And our lawyers say it makes us vulnerable. We have to cut ties with you. Fine. We'll see you in court. And with that, Sam suddenly loses his biggest client, a relationship that took a decade to build and was continuing to grow. Hundreds of thousands of dollars in annual revenue gone literally just the day before. Business was going, uh, literally just the day before, business was going wonderfully. Sam hangs up bewildered and in disbelief. Don't, bro. Don't be bewildered, Sam. You're supposed to get angry because by after this, after reading this, it's official. Every single fucking thing that these women are doing and we've been seeing in the media is all all fabricated it's all manipulated and it's all all bullshit and yes i am fucking pissed as soon as he puts the phone down it begins ringing again this time the caller's name appears on the caller id it's it's sam's second biggest client no hello yeah i see what's going on okay we'll see you in court bye that's it you're probably thinking at this point, wow, yeah, that's powerful, and it'd be awesome to destroy a man by ruining his reputation across the internet, but I don't have the resources to do that, yet you do. 
That's the beauty and genius of this method. With as little as an internet connection and minutes of your time, you can destroy a man worldwide overnight. Certain types of media such as complaint websites and Google search engine are key to enabling the damn online method. Nonetheless, to maximize results, it's still important to tailor all three fundamentals beginning with allegations, crafting allegations. Now, we're literally going to see that this is exactly what Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood are doing. We're literally going to see that. Keep in mind that the allegations you craft for the damn online method will be presented as listings on internet search engine result pages, SERPs. The results you see when you search for something via Google or Bing, for example, here is just some of the many real listings crafted allegations that Google serves up at the time of, of this writing, January 4th, 18, and for the name Darren Ambler, who apparently has been a target of the damn online method. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So we're, we're, we're going to confirm now. We're going to confirm. This has, is real. This is the real damn method used on a man. Apparently, for the Google serves up, right, let's read it again. The results you see when you search for something via Google or Bing, for example, here are just some of the many real listings, crafted allegations that Google serves up at the time of this writing. For the name Darren Ambler, who apparently has been a target of the damn online method. Oh my God. Darren Scott Ambler, New Jersey stalker predator. April 3rd, Darren Scott Ambler resides in the Del, uh, what is it, Delran section of southern New Jersey. Darren Ambler is a pharmacist by trade and is the sneakiest liar sex addict. Darren Ambler, pervert, sex addict, sociopath, con man, New Jersey. Uh, Darren Ambler is a 39-year-old sex addict, pervert, con artist, liar, internet, internet addict, and former drug addict. Darren is, a da Darren is dangerous because he really believes there's nothing wrong with him and that everyone else is either crazy or out to get him. Yeah, that's called Amber Heard. Yeah, we know about that. That's Amber Heard. Typical sociopathic, sick, demented behavior. Whoever fucking made this book is a sociopath piece of shit. Uh, Darren Ambler, New Jersey, liars, cheaters, and bastards. <laughs> July 2016, please stop Darren Ambler. He's a womanizer, con man, cheater, liar, sex addict, and he suffers serious mental problem problems. Beware. He only wants sex and possibly money. He is a professional liar. He is an internet stalker. He preys on prees, whatever, whatever. Darren Ambler, Riverside Top, New Jersey, hey, cheater. November 4th, 2017, hey, Darren Ambler, Riverside Top, uh, New Jersey, is now in, on HeyCheater.com. Darren Ambler is a sick, mentally ill sociopath who preys on lonely old ladies for dirty sex, oral sex, and pornographic acts. Darren Ambler also latches onto women that he can use for their home, free food, and bedroom. Darren Ambler, stalker, pervert, con man, sexual obsession. Dude, you can literally just go online and see these. What the fuck, man? Darren Ambler, age 39 years old. Beware, stay away from this mentally ill sexual pervert. Darren Ambler is a big zero from southern New Jersey. He is obsessed with sex, dating sites, compulsive lying to others, stalking his prey for his next sexual encounter. Darren is a former drug abuser turned into a sexual addict. Darren Ambler, New Jersey sex addict, sociopath, liar, gave me whatever. Uh, Darren Ambler, a.k.a. Damon, Damon? Yeah, Damon Ambler is a liar, sociopath, demented, sex addict, predator. I met the creep online and he cheated while he was having sex with me. Okay, and he lied repeatedly about everything. Darren is an internet predator, internet abuser, among other things. Darren Ambler, sex addict, STD care... STD Cario Sociopath, September 10th. Darren Ambler is a known womanizer, mentally ill sociopath who is addicted to sex acts and porno, who is addicted to sex acts, I guess. He will screw anyone out of desperation. Darren has screwed prostitutes, older women, desperate ages 65 to 80, and anyone stupid enough to. You'll notice from these rudimentary examples that each SERP listing crafted allegation begins with a post title or headline that has a web address underneath and a snippet that provides a sample of the content we'll talk about how and where to post these allegations 
online in the media section of this chapter, but first it's important to highlight what makes a crafted allegation work best for search engine listings for our damn purposes. Although formats, uh, yeah, although formats vary somewhat, most of the websites you'll be leveraging will require your allegation post to have a title and content. They're telling them how to post the allegation. They're literally explaining how to do this. Above all, both the title and content need to name the AM, the what is that, the man or something? The AM and DAM. In other words, they should clarify, identi uh, clear, clearly identify in multiple ways the man you seek to destroy. If the man has a relatively unique name, that's great. The search results Google returns will likely refer to him. But if the man has a common name such as Joe Smith, search engines may return some results you didn't craft. You didn't craft. which would get in the way. I'm so, like I've gone from mad to sad and now to, to determined and now I'm disappointed. In either case, it's best to make the post title and content as specific as possible by including the man's full name and any titles he has, e.g. doctor, pilot, or president. Credentials, e.g., MB, uh, MD, MBA, or PhD, and affiliations, a company, business, or organization, along with other identifying information such as his address, phone number, and age. For instance, they're telling you an example. Oh my God. Dr. Joe Allen Smith, MD, ENT specialist, 40 years old, at Buffalo General Hospital. They put a phone number, 321 Sweet, Sweet Home Road, Amherst New, uh, Amherst, New York, is far better than just Joe Smith. And the more identifying information you include, the easier it is for Google to serve up allegations about the specific man you're targeting. And let's not forget about the power of pictures. Pictures are worth a thousand words, and as the saying goes, and Google appears to agree since it provides image related to search queries near the top of their, of their search results. Thankfully, many of the websites you'll be many of the websites you'll be using oh my god you'll be using allow you to include pictures with your posted allegations to maintain your anonymity. Oh my gosh. You can use pictures of the man that are already public like the ones posted in his social media profiles or other places online, copy and paste them from Facebook, LinkedIn and other sites. Next, in order to attract proper attention, the post title and content you craft. Craft. They're explaining how. They're literally, word by word, need to include scandalous allegations about the man victimizing others by violating legal or ethical standards. Anything shocking can work, but crimes of a sexual and violent nature against women and or children seem to work best. A few examples include rape or sexual assault, physical assault, e.g. Be beating women and pedophilia. Other vices such as alcoholism and drug abuse can also work but appear less effective, perhaps because victims are less apparent. Either way, both approaches are even more effective when phrased as helpful warnings to the public, most likely because they appeal to authorities guardian and savior role by implying that, the weak, uh, that weak people are presently at risk. For example, a post title could read as follows, Warning, all women be uh, beware of rapist Dr. Joe A. Smith, MD, ENT specialist. Further, while the content requires more detail, it needs to be only about a paragraph in length for search engines to detect it, index it, and rank it highly in SERPs. Nevertheless, longer content is typically better in the eyes of search engines. As always, it is helpful to keep the fundamentals in mind. in mind and ask yourself what will get the attention of Mary Media and Arthur Authority. As you can probably guess, crafting sto stories or sharing an uh, anecdotes with allegations chock full of scandalous details, sex, violence, victims, violence, victims, and potential victims works well. 
while most people won't actually click on the listings, seeing the post title and snippet is enough. Search engines appear to rank li uh, listings linked to voluminous content higher in search results, and that's important because we want the public, media, and authorities to notice them. Also, it's obviously best to make the allegations anonymously if you want to protect yourself from any negative repercussions. I can't fucking believe this. I can't fucking believe this. <sighs> man, I can't fucking believe this, man. You can refer yourself simply as a victim or a friend of a victim. In your posts, you can also help maintain anonymity by using a public internet connection like at a cafe or hotel lobby. Look, that I'm, I'm, I can feel my pulse right here on my temple fucking raging right now uh, private, a vi virtual private network connection if you're familiar with how that works to mask your home IP address further some of the websites you'll be leveraging may ask you to register with their username and or email address you can still guard your anonymity however by creating generic usernames and throw away email accounts oh my god dude they're listing it word like fucking point by point man Yahoo, Gorilla Mail, Hotmail, and the like, Karma Princess, whatever. Frankly, the websites do not seem to care who is actually posting. See, this is exploitation. They're exploiting the entire system that we live in. Additionally, although it's important to make the allegations scandalous, it's counterproductive to go overboard and make them ridiculous. For example, an allegation stating he's a doctor who's, who rapes patients is enough to do serious and lasting damage, whereas he's a doctor who drinks 20 bottles of wine per week, smokes crack, hires prostitutes, and rapes his patients sounds over the top and could undermine the credibility of your claims and lose authority's interest. Really? Really? No wonder this person doesn't want you to know who they are. I can't fucking believe this. Moreover, the damn online method relies on multiple allegation postings across the internet to get the attention of search engines and work most effectively because the internet search engines tend to ignore duplicate content. You'll need to craft various written versions of your allegations to be posted on different websites. However, the versions do not have to vary much. Changing a few words and moving some sentences around should suffice. Here are three examples. Do Warning, sexual predator, Dr. Dr. Joe Allen Smith, MD, ENT, specialist, Buffalo General, blah, 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 blah. I'm a former patient victim of Dr. Joe Smith, and I'm posting my experience here to protect other victims from what happened to me. He works at the hospital in Buffalo and lives at 321 Sweet Home Road in Amherst, New York. While examining me for an ear infection, he repeatedly touched my breasts. He even said he was excited to see me while gesturing towards his uh, crotch. I could see his erection through his pants. He also kept insisting I see him outside the office no matter how many times I tried to say no to dating him. I was violated and harassed. I don't feel safe knowing that he has my personal information. Why does Buffalo General allow this sexual harassment and assault? See, and then what would happen? I heard that Dr. Joe Smith, MD, ENT specialist, uh, does it to other patients too. True, uh, too. Don't trust Dr. Joe Allen Smith. Version two. <laughs> Remember, I'm, I'm not even gonna say anything. I'm, I, I don't know. It, this is so disappointing. All women beware of 40-year-old pervert and rapist Dr. Joey Smith a, at Buffalo General does, uh, Hospital at his home at 321 Sweet Home Road. I was Dr. Joseph Smith's patient, and now I'm his victim. I saw him for a throat infection. After he persisted relentlessly, I gave in to the pressure and power that he had over me and agreed to go out with him. Then he raped me. Dude.
He's also a raging alcoholic. He drank so much on our date that he became a violent monster. Monster. This makes me hate Amber Heard and Evan Rachel Wood supporters so much more. This makes me despise them. This despise them. I also think he drugged me with prescription medication. Do not trust Dr. Joseph Allen Smith and watch out for any calls from his phone. Don't even be alone in the same room with him. Google his name and you will see I'm not the only victim. Public service announcement. Rapist, ear, nose, and throat doctor. Uh, Joseph Smith lives at whatever. I smelled alcohol in Joe Smith's breath during my last appointment with him. This alcoholic sex addict also slurred his speech and tried to grope my breast while examining my nose at Buffalo Hospital. I had to leave his office when he wouldn't stop and started to get violent, but I was too embarrassed to make a scene or tell anyone. I was too... No one else should be made into a victim like I was. Spread the word so there will be no... And you know what? After reading this book, I don't believe a single fucking word any woman says anymore. Sorry. After reading this, I'm not going to believe a single... And I don't mean the women watching. I'm talking about the women that come forward with any kind of bullshit allegations. I'm not going to believe a single fucking word any of them say. Because I can guarantee they've all probably read this. And yes, I'm very, very angry. So when people... Oh, he... You, were you mad? Yeah, bitch. Yeah, I am mad. And I'm not even mad in that way. I'm determined now. Now I'm going to drop every single one of these women. Every single one. And we're going to prove that every single one, fucking one of them are lying. And they've all probably read this book. Uh, tell every woman you see and post on social media to avoid this man. And to all other victims I know are out there, please, please, please complain to Buffalo General Hospital and share your story with police. We have to stop Dr. Joellen Smith before he hurts other women. Finally, periodically posting different versions of allegations like the examples just shown to websites over time can help keep uh, scandalous listings for the man you're targeting at the top of Google's search results. As few as one post per week on a website, 10 minutes of your time is enough to keep your allegations fresh and trending on Google's headlines indefinitely. How do you even have a relationship after this? How do you even try and meet a woman after this? How do you even try and have a sexual relationship with any woman after this? Finally, period. Now let's move to discussing the websites where you can post the allegations you've crafted. Well, we're, we're at 52 minutes, so I guess we're going to... You know what? Fuck that. No, no, no. No, 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 no. I was going to say, we're at, we're at 52 minutes, we're going to go and fuck it. Let's go to 70 minutes. I don't give a goddamn how long this is. As you know from Chapter 1, it's difficult to damn without Mary Media's help. This is especially true for the damn online method because it relies on help from specific types of media, mainly websites and Google search engine. Complaint websites are the most crucial type of website to leverage for the damn online method. You've probably come across them while searching online for a business or product review, but if you're not already familiar with them, they depict themselves as websites for people to voice opinions and share their experiences publicly. Basically, they make it free and easy for people to post their reviews and complaints on the internet for all to see. Examples of complaint websites include the infamous and long-standing ripoff report. Oh, I thought that was fake. I thought those were all examples. Ripoff report is real. Along with complaints board and pissed consumer. What the fuck? Why do, do you people have so... You have nothing to do with your lives? Then go on pissed consumer? In addition to websites like these that are geared to attract consumer complaints, e.g. about businesses, product, and services, there are also seemingly endless number of dating and relationship complaint websites such as Report My Ex, Beware, and Cheaters and Homewreckers where you can easily post allegations. For your convenience, for your convenience, here's a list of over 50 complaint websites available online at the top of this writing. <laughs> Bro, they have like a whole half page. I'm not going to read all that bullshit. These websites pro uh, profit tremendously from using public complaints as a legal form of extortion. I said it. I said it. I said it. I said it at the beginning. I said it. I said it. I said it. I'm stopping. I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. I'm, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to stop here. This is extortion. Uh, this, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop. No, I'm not. I'm not going to stop. 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 Okay. 
As alluded in chapter one, media of this kind shield media of this kind shields themselves from legal reper- repercussions by attesting that they do not create the content published on their websites, i.e., complaints. Rather, they are just providing a forum for people to convey it. In that regard, complaint websites can hide behind can hide behind free speech laws and other statutes pertaining to freedom of expression. That's why that stupid bitch kept on talking about freedom of speech. That's why. That's why. Right there. Freedom uh, Pertaining to freedom of expression on the Internet, such as the Communications Decency Act, Section 230. Similarly, many complaint websites actually promote the fact that they do not monitor, censor, or verify the content posted on their platforms. Oh, my God. They're literally telling these women that it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be true. Just come out and say it. Oh, my gosh. What inevitably happens, however, and what these websites bank on is that users post complaints that damage reputations and uh, and result in substantial losses for people and businesses. Then the websites refuse to remove the complaints unless they are paid to do so. What? And the payment they demand for removal is exorbitant, ranging from hundreds to thousands of dollars per post. Moreover, many of these websites make it exceedingly easy to proliferate complaints across the Internet by offering users the, the ability to instantly publish copies of their complaints on multiple affiliated websites. They want your posts to appear everywhere online so people will notice them and pay to have them removed. This process is akin to blackmail. Akin? Akin? That's fucking blackmail. And now I'm back to being sad. <laughs> In other words, by simply clicking on a button and, and on a complaint website, the damn allegation it took you only minutes to craft is published to numerous affiliated com, uh, affiliate complaint websites across the Internet, which helps make it possible to damn worldwide overnight. However, this money-making scheme that, capit- that capitalizes on free speech, again, free speech, and the reach of the internet and reputation ravaging could not be successful without the help of internet search engines like aforementioned Google and Bing. Similar to complaint websites, search engines absolve themselves of responsibility for the search the, uh, results they serve up by attesting that they do not create the content, rather they just convey the information already on the internet. But in true Mary Media style, search engines actually do inflict, uh, influence the impact of the internet content on public by choosing which content to promote at the top of their search results. For, ex- for example, there may be thousands of listings on the internet associated with a search for jo- Dr. Joey Smith, ENT specialist, yet the listings on complaint websites seem to be served up first in Google's search results. This works so well that a complaint posted on ripoff report, for instance, about a company or a person typically ranks higher in Google search results than a company's website uh, for the pers- or the person's Facebook profile. And Google does deserve special commendation in this regard as it is most as it is the most popular search engine and appears to place a greater priority on serving up scandalous content in comparison to other search engines like Bing. In other words, a search for Dr. Joey Smith through Google is more likely to return allegations or complaint websites than the same search conducted through Bing. Moreover, if a person pays a complaint website to remove allegations that appear on the first page of Google search results, Google quickly elevates another complaint website allegation from lower in their result rankings to take its place. I've seen allegations ranking on top uh, ranking on page three of Google's reser- results jump up overnight to replace an allegation res- removed from page one. So that means that Google is assisting these women. Uh, tabloid. In this case, in this sense, Google seems to operate like a newsstand that places tabloids at the front and center display rack to attract customers, whereas Bing tends to position credible sources more prominently. Oh, my God. Make no mistake, however, Bing still does serve up scandalous complaint website listings and its search results just lower down in their rankings. In addition to complaint websites, social media like Twitter also play an important role in making the damn online method so effective. Once you've posted allegations on complaint websites, social media can be leveraged to draw 
even more public attention to them, this is as easy as posting, liking, and retweeting or sharing links to the allegations you publish, sorry, on complaint websites, posting something as simple as, wow, look at what people are saying about Joe A. Smith, MD. He's a doctor. I was thinking of seeing I could have been raped. On Twitter, along with his links to supporting posts on complaint websites, is enough to broadcast the allegations to potentially millions of people and increase internet traffic to further elevate listings of search results. God, dude, this is this is a handbook of exploitation. Oh my gosh. Leveraging authority. Even with your allegations published across the internet and ranking at the top of search engines result pages, it's sometimes necessary to drop them into Arthur, uh, Arthur Authority's lap, so to speak, to get him to take action. Social media like LinkedIn and Facebook are particularly useful in this regard. For example, as LinkedIn profiles are essentially online resumes, they can be used to find information about a man's current and previous places of employment his professional affiliations and the names of important people in his professional network, such as his boss or his biggest client. Similar information can be found in Facebook profiles. With that information in hand, you can mess you can then message allegations to the most important people in his networks via social media, anonymous emails, or the contact us page of employers' websites through the same means. You can also provide authorities with links to post on complaint websites and encourage them to Google his name to see it's true. Oh my God. So they create the allegations, then they create the, the seriousness for it to be on Google, then they go and tell the people to look on Google for the things they've created. Man, dude. Likewise, you can send similar alert messages to regulatory associ associations such as the American Medical Association, encouraging them to revoke any licenses or certification a man has. And as illustrated in the vignette about Sam Mann at the beginning of this chapter, when authorities are directly alerted to allegations, there is an implied duty for them to take action even more in our favor, uh, e.g. terminate employment. Even more in our favor, Arthur Authority makes it nearly impossible for a man to have any recourse against the damn method online. As already mentioned, the media, we, you, we leverage use authority, e.g. the legal system, to shield themselves from repercussions with free speech and internet laws. Why do you think she kept on saying, why do you think Amber Heard kept on saying free speech? Why do you think she kept on saying that, dude? Oh, my God. Similarly, social media giants like Twitter fight hard with their attorneys to protect users' rights to express whatever they want. Moreover, if you maintain your anonymity, whom can authorities take action against? It can be impossible to prove who made the allegations on the Internet. Besides, as taking legal action is ridiculously expensive... And winning defamation cases is notoriously hard. It's usually prohibitively difficult for a man to fight back. Oh, my God, Johnny Depp really did it. He really was fighting back against this bitch. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We're going to read that again. Besides, as taking legal action is ridiculously expensive and winning defamation, defamation cases is notoriously hard, it's usually prohibitively difficult for a man to fight back. And keep that in mind. With the swift loss of income, social, social support, and so on that typically occurs as a result of Allison Allegation, Mary Media, and Arthur Authority's collaboration, most men will not have the resources to even pay for the allegation removals from complaint websites let alone hire a legal team to chase after accusers. Even if a man did have the money, very few lawyers, courts, and laws are equipped to deal with the new tactics and technology underpinning the damn online method. The legal system is already far behind the times and too slow to catch up. In other words, there isn't much most men can do to recover from the damn online method. Wow. 